I am in the middle of making a Judge Dredd diorama and my smallest human has asked me if we can also make him a battleship diorama this weekend. Ugh. Absolutely we can. Now this story begins as so many others do, as I pull a piece of wood off our fence and wonder why my wife hates me. This hyper-realistic battleship set me back $1 on AliExpress, because let's be real, he'll break this in a week and it's the memory of making it with me that he will hold on to. A black prime on the top side from a rattle can and we're airbrushing some blues down, but you can easily sub out the airbrush with some splotches or stipples of paint from a brush and it will be fine. Spoilers, but we might not end up seeing this blue later anyway, so you can cut and run from this step. Some clear plastic and basic tools allow us to create temporary walls for the diorama, for when we create the depths of the ocean. We stick these on the sides of our wooden block, and I'm not worried about any gaps. Now this ship isn't the only thing with a rate of knots, so we'll close this gap off in the wood with another small piece. UV resin is amazing, but holy smokes is it expensive. So we're just using a small amount to work our way around the edges and seal all of the gaps and stick the walls together. How cool is this? Oof, I don't know if it's actually gonna hold. There's only one way to find out. We started our pour with AK Interactive Resin Water, but it turns out I was running low on supplies. Using what we have, we begin and add a couple of drops of ink, including a greeny blue and a bluey blue. We mix, and then the best part, the slow pour. But where is this tiny human? Well, we discussed as a family, and much to the boys' frustration, we decided for now that they won't have any screen time until they're a little bit older and understand the concept of once something is online, it's forever online. And that's where this week's sponsor comes in. Now I've removed the mid-roll ads from my videos so that you don't get random ads being sent to you and instead I can hopefully point you in the direction of some hobby services and tools that will genuinely assist you. My wife and I are keen to teach our kids about online safety and part of that is explaining their digital footprint. Now using a VPN doesn't mean that you're up to some heretical villainy online and instead it can just be another layer of safety for you and your family when operating in the digital space. If you'd like more information and you want to discover why so many people are using a VPN service to help protect their online activities, I'll add a link somewhere here and also in the video description below which will take you to the Surfshark VPN website. There, if you decide that a VPN service is appropriate for you, you can use code FLASHING, which will give you an extra three months free on your subscription. Now, where was I? I've been recommended Solid Solutions Deep Cast Resin, so I'll try topping up the remainder with this. We match the ink, give it a swirl, and pour. I should probably wait a little longer before I try to position the boat, but we are on a roll and feeling impatient, so in she goes. Left in the man cave for a couple of days and it's time to test if it worked. Oh my, no leaks, no bubbles, and it's set. That's so cool. It also means that the wall can come down now, which thanks to the magic of editing, I can pretend didn't take me half an hour. That's already looking like a sweet display, but we want to see if we can put the ship in motion with some waves. If I get something wrong, I don't want to hide it from you. Instead, if I show you my goofs, then you'll be able to learn from it. Now I thought the Mod Podge, if I pushed it around in clumps, would dry clear and look like waves, but I reckon I might have been thinking of Vallejo water texture instead. So despite pushing this around as though it were a wake created by the hull of the ship, it dries and is doing nothing for us. Frig it! We've reset and are rearming ourselves with cotton wool and the water texture acrylic, tearing off pieces and mushing them in the goo. Apologies for using such technical terms. 
placing each of these around the hull in a Mighty Ducks 2 flying V formation and then plonking lots more of the texture paste over the top and around the ship. Go hard, don't feel compelled to toe the line. This will take some time to dry so we look for other odd jobs such as painting the base. You could leave this as a chipping paint for a weathered seaside look if you prefer though. Then ending with a basic black wash over some of the plain grey details on the ship and add senior snips and I think we can call it done. And what do you think? You've made it this far into the video, which means you're amazing, but I'd really appreciate it if you drop anchor on the like button and also tell me below in the comments what you thought of this model and if you have any ideas on what I should design and paint with the tiny humans next. You guys are amazing, but these patrons are some of the finest people you will meet and they are supporting the channel financially and allowing me to create more of these videos. So to them, thank you for being so magnificent. I've been Mike, you've endured my nautical puns, and for that alone, I admire your resolve. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next video.